The Soviet national ice hockey team Russian, Sporna Sesar Po Hokiu S. Sajboy was the national ice hockey team of the Soviet Union. The team won nearly every world championship and Olympic tournament between 1954 and 1991 and never failed to medal in any International Ice Hockey Federation tournament they competed in. After 1991, the Soviet team competed as the unified team at the 1992 Winter Olympics and as the Commonwealth of Independent States at the 1992 World Championship. In 1993, it was replaced by national teams for Belarus, Estonia, Kazakhstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Russia and Ukraine. The IIHF recognized the Ice Hockey Federation of Russia as the successor to the Soviet Union Hockey Federation and passed its ranking on to Russia. The other national hockey teams were considered new and sent to compete in Pool C. The IIHF Centennial All-Star Team included four Soviet Russian players out of a team of six, goalie Vladislav Tretiak, defenseman Vyacheslav Fedosov and forwards Valery Karlamov and Sergei Makarov who played for the Soviet teams in the 1970s and the 1980s were selected for the team in 2008. History Ice hockey was not properly introduced into the Soviet Union until the 1940s, though bandy, a similar game played on a larger ice field, had long been popular in the country. It was during a tour of FC Dynamo Moscow of the United Kingdom in 1945 that Soviet officials first got the idea of establishing an ice hockey program. They watched several exhibition matches in London, and National Hockey League president Clarence Campbell would later say that this was the time when the Russians got the idea for their hockey team. The Russian soccer players were more interested in watching Canadian players play hockey than in soccer. The Soviet Championship League was established in 1946, and the national team was formed shortly after, playing their first matches in a series of exhibitions against LTC Praha in 1948. The Soviets planned to send a team to the 1953 World Championships, but due to an injury to Sevalid Bobrov, one of their star players, officials decided against going. They would make their debut at the 1954 World Championships instead. Largely unknown to the larger hockey world, the team surprised many by winning the gold medal. Throughout the rest of the 1950s, the world championships were largely contested between Canada and the Soviet Union. That changed in the early 1960s. Canada won the gold in 1961, and after missing the 1962 tournament due to political issues, the Soviets would win the gold medal every year until 1972. They faced perhaps their greatest upset at the 1976 World Championships. In their opening match against host Poland, the Soviets were defeated 6-4. In 1972 the Soviets played Canada in an exhibition series that saw the Soviet national team play a team composed of National Hockey League NHL players for the first time. Both the Olympics and World Championships did not allow professionals, so the best Canadian players were never able to compete against the Soviets, and in protest at this Canada had left international hockey in 1970. This series, known as the Summit Series, was a chance to see how the NHL players would fare. In eight games, four in Canada, four in the USSR, the teams were close, and it took until the final 34 seconds of the eighth game for Canada to win the series, four games to three, with one tie. At the 1980 Winter Olympics, the Soviets also had one of their most notable losses. Playing the United States in the medal round, the Soviets lost four to three. This match, later dubbed the Miracle on Ice, was notable because it had the Soviets, recognized as the top international team in the world, against an American team composed largely of university-level players. The Americans would go on to win the gold medal in the tournament, while the Soviets finished with the silver, only the second time they failed to win gold at the Olympics since their debut in 1956. The reforms of the 1980s in the Soviet Union had a detrimental effect on the national team. No longer afraid to speak out against their treatment, players like Vyacheslav Fedosov and Igor Lariano openly critiqued the management style of their coach, Viktor Tikhanov, which included being secluded in a military-style barracks for 11 months of the year. They also sought the chance to move to North America and play in the NHL, though the authorities were reluctant to allow this. Negotiations with the NHL began in the late 1980s over this, and in 1989 several players, including both Fedosov and Lariano, were permitted to leave the Soviet Union and join NHL teams. Topic: 
Topic: Controversy. Until 1977, professional players were not able to participate in the World Championship, and it was not until 1988 that they could play in the Winter Olympics. However, the Soviet team was populated with amateur players who were primarily full-time athletes hired as regular workers of a company aircraft industry, food workers, tractor industry or organization KGB, Red Army, Soviet Air Force that sponsored what would be presented as an after-hours social sports society hockey team for their workers in order to keep their amateur status. By the 1970s, several national hockey federations, such as Canada, protested their use of the amateur status for players of Eastern Bloc teams and even withdrew from the 1972 and 1976 Winter Games. <laughs> Stats Leading scorers Olympics, World Championships, Canada Cups, 1972 Summit Series Sergei Makarov 248 points Alexander Maltsev 213 plus points Valery Karlamov 199 points Boris Mikhailov 180 points Vladimir Petrov 176 points Topic <inaudible> Olympic record World Championship record Summit Series record 1972 lost to Canada 1974 won series against Canada Canada Cup record equals equals challenge cup and rendezvous versus nhl all stars equals equals 1979 one series 1987 tied series topic notable players yevgeny babich helmets baldris sevalid bobrov vyacheslav bikov Natali Davidov, Vyacheslav Fedosov, Anatoly Fursov, Valery Kamensky, Sergei Kapustin, Alexei Kasashinov, Valery Karlamov, Vladimir Krutov, Alfred Kuchevsky, Igor Laryano, Sergei Makarov, Alexander Maltsev, Boris Mikhailov, Vladimir Petrov Alexander Ragolin, Vyacheslav Starshinov, Vladislav Tretiak, Valery Vasiliev, Alexander Yakushev, Yevgeny Zimin, Viktor Zinger Head coaches Popular culture The Hockey Clubin episode of the 1991 TV series Soon's July features Soon dribbling away the USSR national team. The episode was recording during the team's training camp in Sweden. Topic See also Russia national ice hockey team CIS national ice hockey team